listening to Twig, otherwise known as This Week in Geek, but this is not your typical show. That's right, we are doing a surprise edition of The Prototype. That's right, we've talked about doing one all summer, but travel plans, heat, other misadventures have prevented this. But Mike got lazy. No. Mike, <laughs> no, don't I wish. No, I don't. But we are here to finally talk about some video games that we're not reviewing for a change. It's actually kind of nice not to talk about something we're re- reviewing for a change. I know, so many, so uh-huh. many. But fun, but so many. But yeah, so we are here to talk about Broketober, in a sense. Because at this point next year, you are going to be broke. Why are you going to be broke? New games, of course. But no. Next year, holiday 2020, brings the next generation of video game hardware. With the PlayStation 5... Confirmed. And the Xbox Project Scarlet, which, is that the official name? It's no, and they haven't announced the release date yet for it, but... Yes, they have. It's holiday 2020. That, they... It'll be the original they, Xbox they, release date. There's this tentative, they said. It'll be holiday 2020. They're not going to risk losing the PlayStation again. Um. So, yeah, that's what we're going to be talking about today. The Xbox uh, Project Scarlet, PS5... What do we want? What do we expect? What do we know so far? And just have a very speculative podcast over the next half hour or so as we kind of discuss, well, what we kind of want out of these two pieces of hardware, which shall be sitting up uh, spaces in our gaming rooms. And, uh, well, the last console generation started back around 2012, 2011, I want to say. Uh, Wasn't it 2013 when they launched? I can't remember. I remember... Uh, It was 2013. 2013, something like that. Uh, Because I remember Titanfall was one of the first titles I had for my Xbox One. Um, Because it would have been announced in 11 or 12, and then they came out. Yeah. So this console generation, pretty successful. Um, Not as good as Xbox would have liked to have been uh, without, you know, putting too fine a point on it. I mean, the big fault this, this time around is, uh, well, they didn't have a whole lot of, of exclusives you gave a shit about. Besides Forza, Haz- uh, Halo 5 Guardians. Forza, Hazel Guardians. Hazel Guardians. Well, Sea of Thieves, like, who gives a shit? And a lot of these aren't even really being that exclusive anymore. Yeah, because you can play them on Windows PC as well. Or Sunset Overdrive, which is coming to PlayStation. Is it really? Uh, well, because Sony owns it now. <laughs> oh, so I hope that gets a sequel because the first game was fantastic. Yeah, um, and there's really also uh, one thing, uh, Microsoft, your fucking interface is terrible. Uh, everything is designed to be swiped with a finger and, and clicked on with a finger poke. Stop with that bullshit. Give us an easy, clean, less than two clicks to get to everything interface. Although I don't like the cross media bar on the PlayStation Four, but I liked it up more on the it's, PS3. It's not the cross media bar. That's why they or whatever it is. Yeah, and, and they've they've done a better job than you know with the revisions they've done to it. Mm-hmm. But it's still miles better than what Xbox is using. Yes, that, Xbox oh, is definitely. like four clicks to get to certain things, and like buried menu within buried menu. Also, I don't like how to get anything like because we here at twig redeem a lot of digital codes for the games we review which means we get a lot of digital codes and what i mean by that is here are 25 characters versus playstation's 12 that's yeah. just a pain in the yeah and, and, and like there are shortcuts like copying and pasting it using the app but it's still a pain in the butt which i didn't know till last week uh you're thanks. welcome <laughs> yeah thank you for that um so it hasn't been a great time for Xbox. I mean, Xbox did one thing better than PlayStation, though, and I think it saved them, this console generation. That, that is backwards compatibility with the original yeah. Xbox, Xbox and, 360. And 4K Blu-ray player that actually let you play CDs and everything else and media. It's basically the PS3 of this generation's media. Yeah, like Whereas it does media well. PS4 is terrible at media. Like, I watch my television through my Xbox. PS4 doesn't even support... Uh, 3D Blu-rays, 4K Blu-rays, uh, basically any media drive you plug in barely works. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is so limited. And then, whereas Xbox One is basically, it runs VLC for any media you made at home. And it has a player Plex. that plays... Yeah, Plex, CDs, anything you can throw into it, it plays. Yeah. And it's that's pretty much 
Xbox, and it's kind of fallen out even with uh, competitive. Because I remember back in the day, people used to play uh, COD uh, a lot on Xbox. Is now that scene has all moved over to PlayStation. Main reason integration. Other than Mixer, it's crap on. Uh, like, there's no not really good Twitch integration or anything. Uh, also, PlayStation blo- got a lot of exclusives. Loaded. If you have an original Xbox like you have, mm-hmm. they're bloated and slow. Yeah, they're, mine they're, is they're, chugging. They're, they're showing their age now. And I have an X, beautifully smooth and, and buttery smooth, but terrible interface. It's, it's, like, it's like very inefficiently made. Yeah. Like, I have a menu set up on my Xbox uh, where I play my most frequently played games. Or here's a game you should probably beat at some point. Um, it's pretty bloated. Um, but... Eh. Uh, so to talk about the Xbox's success this generation has been hit or miss. There have been some good games released for it. Um, there have been some great multi-release games for it, like some things are both released on PlayStation and uh, and Xbox. Uh, good examples of this would be some of the Bethesda games. Uh, for example, PC modding was brought to Xbox One. So if it's if you can mod. Fallout 4 on PC, you can mod this. Almost all the same mods are available. Same with Skyrim. That's pretty cool. PlayStation says since the security issues they had, that you can't use any external assets. So that was a big negative for them. So there's more uh, uh, Fallout players on Xbox, but whatever. More uh, Fallout players. Well, Fallout 4 and whatever, but Fallout 76, fuck that Fallout game. 76 players, you mean Rubes? Yeah. <laughs> Which at this point, I don't know. They even delayed their big new DLC, Wastelanders, till next year. And the game's one year anniversary comes up in just a few weeks. That company, I'm sorry, they're dead. Like they, they, They'll never die because of Skyrim. Oh, you just wait. They're going to come. They'll, they'll rush out the next, uh, the next Elder Scrolls. And if the next Elder Scrolls is like this, they're fucking done. They've got nothing. I don't know, man. Uh, Wolfenstein. Unless they sell off the Fallout. They don't IP. even own Wolfenstein. It's made by other people, and they publish it. They're fucking done. I don't know. They survived Fallout seventy six, and they own but, Doom. But they can. Uh, they cannot survive a a Skyrim level game falling apart. Yes, if they screw up the Elder Scrolls like like they did Fallout seventy six, then yes, you definitely got a point. Uh, PlayStation, 5, or PlayStation 4, rather, uh, this generation had a bunch of really, really good exclusives almost consistently throughout its lifespan. God of War, Infamous Second Son, uh, Spider-Man, Detroit Become Human. Um, Tons of JRPGs. Yep. Uh, and not just that, like, full key, keyboard and mouse support for MMOs, day one. They don't talk about that, but day one they just worked. Didn't Xbox just get it this year? Uh, it was in enabled on certain titles. And they leave it up to developers to yeah. enable it. Bullshit. Because yeah. PlayStation had it working day one, like five, six, seven years ago. Although PlayStation would not allow crossplay until very recently. Yeah, uh, but does honestly, if you're playing an MMO on a, a PS4 or console, well, I'm talking stuff like Fortnite. Or yeah, Fortnite. yeah. As you say, you're playing MMOs or all that sort of stuff in there. I'm sorry, buddy. You're gonna get wiped. The floor is going to be cleaned by you. Like, yeah, like you're going to get your ass kicked if you're playing controller versus keyboard and mouse in Fortnite. Yeah, yeah. And, and as it is, like, what person really goes and goes, I, you know, for Fortnite, which runs on really low end hardware, I need to use it with a controller on a PS4 versus a PC. With a yeah, game. like it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, because the barrier to entry for Fallout or for Fortnite is remarkably low. And I have a cat visitor. Hi, Wiley. How you doing, buddy? So, um, yeah, PlayStation has done a lot of things, but one area they failed in is backwards compatibility. They did have PlayStation Now, which is where you can stream PS3 games, but they just recently announced a price cut. Too yeah. little, too late. A price cut and PS1 and 2 titles uh, can be downloaded for local play. Yeah, but you can now you can get big titles for limited times only, like well, God of War play, yeah, or you know what it is? GTA they 5. They haven't officially shut down PS3 yet. Mm-hmm. No, Wiley. You no walk on me. Ah, cat! <laughs> I'm fighting the cat. He's trying to smother me. 
<laughs> Wiley, can you be good boy? <laughs> We're keeping this in. Yep. I've been attacked by a cat, and he's trying to walk on my keyboard with all my notes and everything. <laughs> uh, and now he's pouting. Yes, you sit right there, buddy. You'd be good boy. <laughs> now, the PS3 has not been discontinued. No. The PS3 is 100% PS1 backwards compatible, even with yes. physical discs, even on the super slim that I have. The PS1 uh, plays a lot of your previous... Or, sorry, the PS3 plays your previous titles. Until they officially cancel that service and the Vita service... There's no reason for them to improve backwards compatibility on PS4. And we're so late into this life cycle that it's going to be included in the next one. Yeah, there was a recent rumor to talk about the PlayStation 5 as we move forward. Uh, there's a recent rumor uh, circulating. I think I saw it on Gamer Rants, but I think it originated on another website. The rumor is PlayStation 5 will include PS1, PS2, PS3, PS4 titles backwards compatible if they do that and allow me to download the my psn library that i own they, they officially win they've won hands down they have won um because xbox's titles for backwards compatibility probably the same for like playstation but it was de- it was dependent upon whether the developers wanted to make it com- compatible and with the xbox let's hardware. be real the Xbox never really had that great software to begin with. It had the popular software, not the best software. Yes. Um, like, there are some titles I wish I could download on my Xbox One because I have it attached to my Xbox Live account, but it was never ported certain titles like Simpsons Arcade, X Men Arcade, my Marvel vs. Capcom games. Some of these games have been delisted. Yeah, like the more interesting ones would be the early first two to three years of the original Xbox. Yes. Those are the interesting titles that people forget about. The 360 was basically a Call of Duty machine, and that was it. I would like, disagree with that. Was, but what I say by Call of Duty machine, I say the MO, like the, ma- the multiplayer fight shooting games. There wasn't a whole lot of uniquely individual games that, that, you, that you had the best experience on that platform that could only be delivered on that platform. Did you have both systems? Uh, yes, I did. Okay. Uh, I had both. I would agree, yeah. The Xbox was definitely designed with multiplayer shooters in mind, like your CODs, your Halos, yeah. your stuff like Single that. Single-player experiences were always PlayStation. Yeah, because uh, stuff like Metal Gear Solid 4... Uh, the ports of Metal Gear Solid uh, 2 and 3. Just just the wide variety, or the fact that they would, even if uh, there was maybe initially a better version on, or a version first on Xbox, they generally got definitive better editions, like the Mass Effect trilogy. Plays way better on PS3 than it does on the original Xbox, or a 360. I don't know, I always found PS3 ports to be inferior in my Did you play experience. the Mass Effect ones? No, I did not. Uh, Mass Effect 1 on PS3, because there was never an original version of the no. right, used the Mass Effect 3 engine. Interesting. So it's still the best way to play that title. Okay. Um, so with, with PlayStation 5, backwards compatibility will be a huge thing. Now, to talk about some of the specs that have been announced, I'm just going to go over these, some of these, because Alex will be able to speak to it a lot better than me. Um, it's going to support up to an 8K resolution. No surprise there. That'll be for video. That will likely not be for gaming unless it's indie games that, that scale really well. Um, it will include a solid-state drive. No surprise there. Yeah, they're really fast. It's probably going to be PCI Express 4, blah, blah, blah. Honestly, I don't really care. Uh, you know, that specs-wise, they're going to be streaming a lot of stuff from the net, too. Um, ray tracing, which I just found out about. Which, explain it to our listeners. Okay, so without getting super technical and just trying to dumb it down, uh, just for the sake of not spending an hour talking about this, uh, ray tracing is used, it has been used in Hollywood movies for the last 20 years, eh, 25-ish maybe, and it's what provides the realistic lighting shadows uh, as well as uh, ambient effects and uh, things like the HDR lighting that you see in, in higher-end movies, productions. like It is what makes reflections in water look real. It's what makes shadows that are cast through fog look real. And it is what makes the difference on the shading of somebody's face, uh, the way things react to lighting objects that make or break the uncanny valley. Okay. So it is... People said it was a fad. The people that said it was a fad were people that didn't know how to program for it or were from a rival company that didn't want to make it. 
but basically it's the biggest jump in visual fidelity, much bigger than HDR. HDR is about how the shading works in a game uh, and how like the, the color reproduction is. Uh, this is the, the biggest upgrade from... Like, do you remember the time when you saw MotorStorm for the, for the demo for the PS3? Mm-hmm. And you're like, this is insane graphics. Like, the, the jump you had from PS2 to PS3, that's what this is. Whereas PS3 to PS4 was an incremental jump, this is the largest jump in visual fidelity that, uh, than when you went from 240i to 1080p. That's how much of a jump it is. Oh, wow. Uh, so they're talking about uh, some of the different things uh, on here for some of the specs here. And they're talking about uh, the GPU will be a custom AMD Navi GPU. As we said, will support uh, ray tracing at a hardware level. Uh, audio, the PS5 will have 3D audio that uh, uh, one guy believes will be dramatically different to PS4 audio. Uh, let's see what else. Here. Okay, so 3D audio for anybody that doesn't know. It's virtual audio. If you've heard of Dolby Atmos, that's what it is. Instead of a defined 5.1 channel setup or a 7.1, they can add 30 channels if they wanted to. How it is is you position, it's positional audio. PCs have done it since the old creative, uh, remember the creative labs, um, shit, right? the creative labs uh, EAX stuff? Yeah. Computers have done it since the 90s. Um, the only current system that did it was the Xbox, uh, the Xbox One S and X have uh, Atmos in it. Okay. They're the only game systems that do. Most things don't take advantage of it. PS4 uh, is a traditional uh, Dolby or DTS 7.1. So this is basically catching up. So this isn't improved over Xbox, but it's catching up to the X, basically. Uh, let me see. What else do I see here? Uh, we were talking about resolution. There. Re- you know, resolution. Excuse me. Uh, 4K Blu-ray player. With the uh, with the ability to read up to a hundred gigabyte optical disc discs. Oh, okay, because right now the 4K Ultra HD player that's in the S and the X of Xbox uh, only do uh, triple layer regular Blu-rays, which are 66 gigs. Okay. Uh, they're also confirming backwards compatibility with PS4 and PSVR titles. So my guess is your PSVR headset shit will still work. And then there will be a one that's twice as powerful. They release separately wirelessly. Probably around Christmas time yeah. or something. Yeah. Um, there's going to be some form of cloud functionality. Uh, they don't know specifically, or at least it hasn't been revealed what that is. Um, game installations will be more configurable uh, due to the way that Solid State Drive works, uh, allowing players to delete just a single-player campaign while keeping multiplayer, for example, if the developers support it. So let's say you're playing COD, you beat the campaign, but you want to play the multiplayer, you can do that. This will also open up monetization properties. So I only want to play the single player. Fuck the multiplayer. Well, can't, well I only have to pay $50 instead of 80 or vice versa. I don't see them doing that personally. No, but that, they've openly said that that is a feature you could do. Oh, okay. You could charge for individual modes, which yeah. uh, I'm not so much worried about that because there are people that will just want multiplayer COD. I'm more worried about Capcom with a Street Fighter Six or something. Well, kind of like how they did with like Killer Instinct, where they charge per character. But but no, but like I I could see Capcom being like it's fifty dollars for each mode of play, fifty dollars for arcade, fifty dollars for practice mode, fifty dollars for this, because Capcom a bunch of greedy bitches. I'd say EA is more likely to be the more egregious company. E- in this. EA EA. Activision, Ubisoft. Uh, Ubi won't be that bad. Ubi will be bad with microtransactions. Microtransactions, but not charging per mode. Yeah. Per mode would be Konami and Capcom from Japan. Or Activision. Uh, and Activision and, and uh, Bethesda. I don't know about Bethesda. Simply because Bethesda is very open with the ability to mod their games. Now they do have the Creation Club, which does, does allow them to charge for premium mods. Yeah. Which is less successful because a lot of them, they just throw up on the Nexus and you can download for free anyway. But if you want a mod that has maybe a little bit more money put into it, whatever. Um, It'll be Activision and, and EA. EA that just, just rape people, honestly, over the cost of, of it because they've been doing that. It, it, it'll be a new mod. I like the idea of if I only want the multiplayer, I only have to pay for the multiplayer. Mm-hmm. But that, that they won't do that day one. That'll be something they introduce the next year or something. 
Uh, one of the things they're talking about is a new PlayStation 5 controller featuring uh, adaptive haptic uh, features, mm-hmm. where basically the more pressure or less pressure you put on, on the triggers. Uh, well, okay. It's also basically HD rumble. Yes. It's HD rumble with force feedback like you'd have on, on the old joysticks. Uh, USB type C is supported. So standard on everything, okay. meaning you won't have to change your, your charging cables from anything except for, I believe, even the newest Elite Xbox controller is using it, USB C. So we're finally moving away from the micro and the mini. Um, things that have not been revealed. Evidently, the final, the picture that's floating around right now is of a dev kit that looks like a V yeah. or a toilet seat. And, and honestly, dev kits, they never look like the final product. Yeah, so it'll look a little yeah. sleeker. Um, it is unlikely to have a touch screen, although I've heard microphone will be integrated somehow. We already have microphones in the controllers, so that's nothing new. Unless they're talking about like a wide spacing microphone, there is talk of integrating a uh, assistant into it. Mm-hmm. So you, So instead of like saying, you know, PlayStation this... You could just ask it a question or like ask it, could you, uh, you know, hey, PlayStation, uh, turn, uh, could you turn on uh, this game at 7.30 p.m. and invite Michael? Mm -hmm. And it could invite at 7.30 p.m. The system could turn on, log into the game, send you an invite to join me in a game, and we could then start. So you could have it automated to, to do tasks like that, which is pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, I'm excited for the, for the PlayStation 5 now. This is where we get into pure speculation territory. What do you think the cost is going to be? Uh, I think it's going to be 550 Canadian. I'm going to go a little higher and say 6 They won't. Um, here's the thing. They're using the new Ryzen chips. Mm-hmm. The, uh, this has been developed for, for a while. They're going to produce probably 5 to 6 million consoles for Christmas. They're going to want to have... They're going to want to produce more than they've ever produced ever because of how popular the PS4 ended up being. The more that they produce, the cheaper the cost can be. They will sell this as a loss leader to get people in that, to convert. So I'm willing to bet that uh, the sweet spot in the States is going to be $4.99 probably, mm-hmm. and it'll be uh, $5.50 Canadian. Or if they really want to undercut uh, Xbox, it'll be $4.59 American, $500 Canadian. Which is similar to the price point we actually wasn't it three ninety nine for the PS four in the initial launch? I think it was higher than that. I think it was three ninety nine. It was fifty dollars cheaper than. I think it was it was fifty bucks cheaper than yeah. than, uh, than Xbox. And I'm thinking they don't want to go in. They don't want to hit that five hundred price point if they can avoid it in the states. Uh, but I, I'm thinking four fifty between four and four fifty American, mm-hmm. four fifty and five Canadian. Um. Now, launch lineup. You have to have... Now, it's... I would say it's not unfair to say you have to have a fairly strong launch lineup. You have to have a game that's really going to wow people, that makes it a system seller. What game, what franchise, or what thing do you lock up? Here's PlayStation 5, 2020. What do you do? Witcher. Uh, There's going to be a Witcher, because it's coming out in April. There'll be a version ready uh, that is... Not enhanced, but it'll say Witcher uh, 4K 60 Ultra settings. Um, you would sell a system on a port? Uh, it, it, yes. That game, I would say... No, Are you saying only game, or are you saying game yeah, launch? Yeah, exclusive. Oh, what exclusive? Do you want, basically, if, if you're going to have a launch exclusive, what do you launch with? Because hey, because it's already confirmed. Yeah. Project Scarlet will have Halo 6. And Ghost of Tsushima is coming to PS4. It's not going to be an exclusive to PS5. Not, there's not a single game they've announced that is PS5 exclusive. They've not shown any game that's that way. They've shown games that have. They have even told if there's any games coming to both. The only one that's confirmed it is uh, CD Projekt said that they have a version coming. I think it's the only actual game they've announced. Uh, I would say, um, Infamous. Infamous would be it, a smart Second choice. Son's been a while. Yeah, uh, like the order wouldn't work. But as far as titles, like God of War has been too soon. Spider Man is too soon, too soon too soon to release any of that. Um, Ratchet and Clank won't move systems. The the knack who gives knack, a shit. exactly. I think it's I think an infamous game. A little big planet's a possibility. Uh, infamous because it was one of the first titles to have HDR support when it did launch and everything. Yeah. Like I think Infamous is is a franchise that will do well uh, for PR purposes. 
Uh, I think a Twisted Metal showing off, yep, showing off insane choice. fidelity. Uh, do you want to dip deep into like Sony's, you know, history or something to go? And you have to maybe look at like what was popular on the PS1 or PS2. Um, they're not going to do like a Genji or anything like that. I'm I'm thinking, and I don't think it's Twisted Metal because they would have announced a new title by now. Had or they, something. We've um, seen something by now. I'm thinking. I'm thinking like an uncharted collection of everything might be one because like there's going to be a lot of ports. But yeah, for, there, for at least the first year, there's going to be a, a crap ton of ports. Uh, like it's too soon for Ko- uh, Kojima to release anything else because Death Stranding. It's too soon for anything to come out like Detroit Become Human. I like, guess it like there's not unless these companies have been working on something in the background. It's too soon. I'll tell you something that'll win the PlayStation Five launch window. GTA 6. You mean if they paid a... a, a, a for sec- exclusive pay- ex- exclusivity for one year? Yeah. Oh, PS5, yeah, so, they so I thought you were talking about what are they developing in-house. No, I'm talking about if... Oh, if, in, if, in, in, for, for PlayStation exclusive. Oh, PlayStation, like paying a third party to make an exclusive yeah. game for them? Or temporary exclusive? Uh, yeah, uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2. Um, yeah, that's a good pick. Uh, that's a, a potential one. Uh, if we're going... Call of Duty... I don't what think... if they said Call of Duty console exclusive? Because they need the money. They do. I don't think you'd see Activision split that. I, I think split that, especially you know, you know, now since you know we're doing cross party title. I think we get uh, uh, we get a um, Horizon Zero Dawn. That wouldn't be a, a new, bad a new, hori- a new Horizon that's title. been about two or three years. I since. think it's a New Horizon title or uh, or Killzone. Yeah, yeah, it's been a while since Killzone. Because that, that, that was a launch title too. Yeah, uh, it's not a bad pick. Is it time to bring back Resistance. Yeah, Resistance is is a franchise that could do with a bit of a dust off if they um, wanted to do a soft reboot. I'm trying to think if you're going third party companies and you want to lock down something, a play, uh, a thing that would work, but unfortunately the lead developer is now left that studio. Um, you put a new Metal Gear on it, but Metal Gear Survive was hot dog shit. And Phantom Pain is now four years ago in the rear. Castlevania. Yeah. But but it's got to be something large that will gather the masses that people know and love. That's why I'm saying a Grand Theft Auto would get people in. GTA is the biggest title you could possibly do that way. Uh, The only thing would be something from CD Projekt, I think. Something from them. uh, Bioware. But they're owned by EA. Yeah, so, if, so another if, Mass Effect? If they, if, no, if, if they said Dragon Age, the new one, it's exclusive, done. Like there, there's, there's a bunch there. Uh, from Anything from Ubi would be Beyond Good and Evil. Um, yeah. I can't think of... Because there are smaller titles that they could get that would be exclusive that would be good, but there's a lot of companies that have shrunk or are gone that used to make big titles that you're never going to get a licensed title to be exclusive anymore mm-hmm. uh, unless it's Spider-Man that they own. Yeah, uh, you're not going to get anything like, like, like that. Like they're not going to get Warner to make them anything. They're not going to get, you know, other ones. Square like, Just Cause maybe, they could get Square to give them that exclusively. But is it a big enough seller? I don't think so. No. If you really wanted to freak people out and be like exclusive, it would be going to Square Enix and being like, have them show a teaser trailer of like, Chrono Trigger. Yeah. Show that some, would put some ass Chrono, Chrono Trigger or. If, if they showed uh, a te- even just a, a little hint, because we're, we're, we'd be like four or five years away, but a teaser trailer of Final Fantasy VIII Remastered or Final Fantasy VI. Done, even, if the, even if the Final Fantasy VI is done in the style of that Trials of Mana game coming out. I'd buy it. Exclusive. Um, there, cause, or something from Platinum. But I can't think of anything like, what's, what, what are huge, humongous sellers? Yeah. So to shift gears here, let's talk about the Xbox. So Xbox Project Scarlet has again been confirmed for holiday 2020. Um, let's look at some of the hardware specs they have announced. So let me pull up. It's basically uh, the same stuff. Yeah, it's basically they, the same they, shit. They basically copycatted them for the most part. Um, um, they're, 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 oh, and their thing is going to be heavily integrated with their streaming platform. Yeah, they're going to do ray tracing, 8K, um, Custom solid state drive, RAM GDD uh, R6, custom AMD Zen 2, um, maximum frame rate 120, 
Okay, so yeah, basically the same shit as as the PS5, maybe a little better, maybe a little worse, but they say it'll be the most powerful piece of gaming hardware out there. Okay, just okay. Thought, just thought about something. One last thing for PlayStation. You want to get some exclusives in there that maybe not like the super AAA budgets, but that could really turn the tide. What? Sign up Riot Games because they they have like five titles that they're having development outside of uh, League. Yeah. Sign them and say console exclusives. But, like not like you can't get because they're going to release everything on PC. Yeah. Let's say for console exclusivity platform, anything. So right. put like League of Legends on PS5, sort of. Yep, thing? and anything because they have five five or six games in development. Okay. Anything they put out, say anything that they put out is coming to us only. Okay. Other than PC. Um. So let's. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> Last thing, I'm dumb. Assassin's Creed. Contact yep. contact Ubi and say Assassin's Creed one year exclusive, on here. That could be good, and I could see that. But then again, they'd really have to put some real money into it. Okay. Here's the thing. We've been talking about it quite some time. It, it, it seems to be dead in the water. Um, Splinter Cell. Make Splinter Cell a, an exclusive, a new one. Again. That would pull people over. Yeah. It's, it's a dormant property that they might not have been wanting to invest in for quite some time now. Yeah. That Sony could invest in and say... You have plenty on, on multiple platforms. This will be ours. That's fair. Because, yeah, it's been dormant since, uh, can, not Conviction, uh, Blacklist, and that was a 360 title. So that was at the ass end of its life, 2013, I think. Um, so, okay. So Project Scarlet. It's already confirmed. Halo 6, Halo Infinite is a launch title where we finish the fight against... Finish the fight, fight the third against, or fourth time. Against fucking Cortana. Fuck off. Yeah. I so hated Guardians. The multiplayer was fun. Do not get me wrong. It was a lot of fun. They have uh, nothing else. But, yeah, like... Nothing. Where does Microsoft go? It has the Master Chief. They, here's the thing. They own a whole bunch of new studios. That's but about what are it. they doing with them? Uh, they own Obsidian. They're working on shit. You've got the outer... The outer outer worlds, outer worlds that comes out like this week or next yeah. week, and I don't care. Yeah, um, um, they have got gears, but that just yeah, came they, out. And, and Crackdown was a joke. Yeah, uh, th- they, that's a game that was shit they, out just to get it off. The they're board. gonna have a Forza, and that's it. They have nothing else. Oh, that's what they should show off. Gran Turismo Five or Gran Turismo Seven. Yeah, that's what they need to show off on. on but Gran Turismo, to me, it's never been a technical feat. It, yeah, that's all it is. Yeah. Like, here's a cool. Yeah, they'll show something like that off. That that'll, that's what Sony needs. But yeah, but on on the the, I can't see like none of these companies want to mosey up to unless they're one of the first party studios of like the thirteen studios or whatever the stupid things they bought. Mm-hmm. Nobody third party wants to touch Microsoft right now. Or at least give them anything super exclusive. Yeah, like you're you're not going to see exclusives from anybody except the studios they bought. So they got nothing. Like, I'm trying to think here what they could do. I mean, one of the the Xbox strong uh, franchises, though a little niche but very strong, is Killer Instinct. Now, that's not a system seller though. That's a launch lineup title, maybe. But then you have to buy additional hardware if you really want to play it the way it's meant to be played with a fight stick. And odds are you're playing it with a controller because you don't want to spend 150 bucks, 200 dollars on a fight stick. So again, we're stuck with Halo. Sony has so many more iconic franchises in its back door. So Crackdown, who gives a shit? Um, Forza, okay, that's something. That's almost a given at this point. Next year will likely be Halo Infinite and Forza. What else do you do? Because Sea of Thieves is too soon. Maybe you'll get a big update to it, but who cares? Yeah, they've got my... Like, we can always get a grab by the ghoulies. I'm trying to think <laughs> what's a really good Microsoft property. They could do something with Joanna Dark. Yeah, I'm perfect. Yeah, yeah. Cause, because they own Rare. Rare is not rare anymore. Yeah, I mean, rare, the rare. Retro Replay was a nice the, nostalgia trip. The best trip. studio they purchased that didn't shut down is probably Obsidian. Yeah, I was about to say Obsidian, yeah. So their, their, their RPG game is going to be fucking strong. If Microsoft wanted to strike hard and fast, Skyrim or whatever the next Elder Scrolls is, 
if they get console <laughs> exclusivity. Or dig deep. Bring it back like Brutal Force and like the stuff from the, the original Xbox. Bring, bring oh, it. fuck. I forgot about that. And, and like Metal Wolf and all. Or not Metal Wolf. Uh, what was the other one? That they Mech did? Warrior. Yeah, bring back the... They are, well, they are working on that. but Yeah, but that's a PC game. Yeah, like... Um, uh, or was it Mech Commander? What was they? They had one that was in the same universe, but it yeah, was, yeah, it, it was called Mech Warrior, Mech, Mech Assault, Warrior Two, Mech Assault, yeah. and Mech Assault Two. Yeah, those were great. Like bring yeah. back something, bring back something out of left field like that, or Crimson Skies. Bring us a Conquer and make it like hardcore. Yeah, that that's strong, but you're limiting your audience because it would be 17 plus. Pump a bunch of money into the studio that did uh, Cuphead and see what they can come up with. Yeah, because it's been a year or two since like Cuphead came out. Um, I know there's a game that it's a clone of Cuphead, but it still looks fantastic. It's called Enhanced Portals. It's in Kickstarter right now. You know what? Why not? Um, oh, there you want you want to really like destroy the entire mindset of all the internet people out there? Have Sony or uh, Microsoft contract. Valve to make Half Life Three. Put put money like not just like they're because they always say that they're still in development. They've never canceled it. Yeah. Have them go. Do you want a hundred million dollars to make a game for us? Yeah. And have them make it. Well, it would have to cost more than that because I think the budget for GTA Five was. But it but it would astronomical. It just don't don't make it the highest end thing. Just make the fucking game. Yeah. And just it. here here's money. Do it. Make the game and release it like that. That like or just even say Valve is working on a game for us outside of the PC realm. Be like just blow their minds. Yeah, that's not a bad pick. Or if Sony said, "Hey, we're we're now taking ownership of Star Citizen." Yeah, the one that's been in development hell for years. Uh, Starfield, you mean, right? No. Oh, Star Citizen. The one, the one by the guy that did the the, the big wing, Kickstarter. The or whatever? They made over two hundred million dollars in crowdfunding. Yeah. Take that shit over. Yeah, I can see that. Um, if Microsoft, if they've done anything right in the last two years, when they introduced uh, a lot of uh, stuff through backwards compatibility, although now they've stopped adding to that catalog as of like June. But there's still a lot of stuff available through Game Pass. You're getting first-party titles day one, and you're getting the best version of them. Like, um, even though we were provided a review code for Gears of War 5, if you buy Xbox Game Pass, you got Gears of War 5 with the Ultimate Edition. Yeah, I got that, and you got a review code. Yeah, I was like, that's amazing. That's a great yeah. value. And that's the thing I kept telling you, get the, get the Ultimate. You're like, I don't think I need it. I'm like, dude, I just got more than you for free or part of my, part of my normal service. Then you got for review. Well, I still got the ultimate edition, but yeah, you know, but you know what I mean. Like for re- regular, like you know what I mean. It was yeah. It's funny that that there they may not have as many releases because of that. Like they might be just relying on subscriptions. Yeah, I mean Microsoft. If they do anything right, they they do backwards compatibility right. What they need to do is expand that to open up their library of Xbox Live Arcade titles. Yeah, and be, that weren't brought be prepared over. Prepared for Xbox not to even attempt Japan this time. Like they've done the last two systems. They just, yeah, they they, they just it. haven't done well. So yeah, for whatever like, reason. I'm I'm not trying to be negative on on uh, Microsoft. I'm just not seeing anything. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's it's clear in how me and Alice both talk here. You're very pro PlayStation. I'm trying to love I'm, Microsoft. I'm not, but pro, I'm having a hard time. I'm not pro any. I'm 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 looking at what's out there, and I'm like, this is what's going to be better based on what the facts are. If Microsoft comes out and just obliterates them, and I'll be like, guess I'm playing. Like, like I'm not a fanboy. I pick whatever system. I pick whatever system I think is going to do well for the games I want to play. I think another thing. I just thought of a way Microsoft could do well with the success uh, this year we saw with Resident Evil Two. If they put Resident Evil Three Nemesis console exclusive for one year on the Xbox Project Scarlet, that might be enough to turn to turn some heads. Or ground up remakes of uh, the Metal Gear Solid series. Yes, because we never have gotten a port since the GameCube of Metal Gear Solid 1, the Twin Snakes, because that's tied up in rights. Yeah. Because of fuck, stupid... Fuck you, Dennis Dyack. And your, yeah, your thanks fucking... a lot, Silicon Knights. Thanks for destroying St. Catharines as well, the city's reputation. Yeah. <laughs> nice guy when I met him in person, though. Um, but anyway, yeah, if you said... We'll give you Metal Gear 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 
HD, completely redone as much as they can, upgraded, whatever. 4K 60 with better, with uh, ray tracing. Like, and enhancements, like, yeah. whatever. Ultimate edition. You give that collection, I would buy that for sure. Because 4 has never been ported um, outside of its original release on the PlayStation 3. Yeah, make it a little more efficient to run so it doesn't have to install a file, install 5 gigs every 5 hours of gameplay. That would be pretty sweet. And we're not talking about the, the Nintendo because the Nintendo's on its own thing. They're doing just fine on their own. They're, they're, they're sort of in a league of their own. There's no really reason to speculate on them because Nintendo's going to do what Nintendo's going to do. Yeah. N- Nintendo's in this weird place where they don't even really need to pay attention to what the console makers are doing. Yet. Because they don't yet. It'll, it'll depend on if they see a sales drop when the PS5 comes out. If they see people... Uh, not, and when I say sales drop, I mean if they see um, third-party sales drops of their of their games. And now the cat went right back on me. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> no. Oh. Wiley, you can't be on the show. Crushing buddy. my mic. <laughs> he just wants love. Stay up there on the shoulder. That's that's right. And no. He's gonna put his butt in your face. Oh, and yes, yes, that's right. Love me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to record the rest of the show with a cat on my chest. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Nintendo, they're going to have to do a hardware refresh in the next little bit because there's going to be a, a Switch Pro. That's just going to happen. Kind of like how they do a hardware refresh every two to three years anyway. Um, with the, I guess the exception being the Wii, but there was the Wii Mini. I guess, if you really wanted to call that a hardware refresh. Yeah, I guess sort of. That was the Canadian thing, but it had no... No Netflix, no wireless, yeah, no nothing. Yeah, anything like that. It was weird. Um, but yeah, if you look at where this is going to sit, I think PlayStation has the advantage, unless Microsoft can pull something really heavy it, out of its It butt. has to be very dramatic. Yeah, like, I'll, I'll say this. Halo will sell a system. But Halo will not sustain a system. Like, yay, you've got your Halo players, you've got your Halo install base. It, cool. It's gonna come what are you down playing to, six months from like, now? Fortnite's going to be on everything, but what it's going to come down to is for COD and like, okay, you, oh, you want to do something? Sony, lock Madden down. Lock, yep. lock Madden and each other. FIFA. And, and, and say, hey, guess what? You can only get the EA Sports titles on our platform. Period. I'd wonder how that would happen simply because now there's cross-platform play, which if, that's going to have to be a factor would, too now. If they, if they said, hey, you can only get, uh, or even better, you can only get FIFA on our system. If they were willing to pony up the cash for a one, for the, for the first year of the new console generation, you could only get it on our console. We're not talking weird ports to, to the Switch or anything, or even last gen, like, Literally lock it down. So like, hey, there is only one way to play Madden and one way to play FIFA and one way to play NHL. Because that's what Sony does with baseball. The only way to play baseball is on the MLB of the show, yeah. That's the only official baseball title released. The the other one being the RBI one, but that's an arcade title that costs like twenty bucks. And it's not officially yeah. licensed. It, is it? it is licensed by the okay. players, but it's the only other one. Because it's actually made by the MLB players association. Oh, okay. But the only like good i'm gonna say the only good baseball game like high tier it's the show is the show and it's only on playstation so do that shit buy up the license and i don't mean buy it up from i don't even mean buy it up from ea go from the nhl go to the nhl and say we want the license or go to the nfl or whoever yeah, yeah. and say we want the license how about this we'll do a profit share uh it's, instead of paying a licensing fee for a year revoke ea's license like they'll have to go to war with ea over it but Either go to EA, and if EA doesn't want to play ball, go right to the association. Because they've had a stranglehold for over 10 years now on, on baseball, and that game sells like hotcakes. Yeah. It's like the, it's like one of the most successful sports titles. It's not one that gets a lot of attention, like people talk about it, but it has a very dedicated fan yeah, base. Yeah, and it sells better in Japan than any other sports title does. So I'm trying to think what else. Like, we have systems that have... Sony, I think, has the superior first-party exclusives. Xbox has a lot of really great studios. Yeah. Microsoft has an advantage 
and the Master Chief is more iconic. Sony has Nathan Drake. Sony Sony is where you go to play the stories. Yes. Uh, Xbox was traditionally where you went to play with people, but not this now, past generation. N- yeah, it's really changed. It was, it was now, it was similar to Nintendo. Here's where you go to play our stories. Mm-hmm. Sony became, here's where you go to play all the stories. Yes. The, everybody, the, it was always the best version of the multi. Like, the only reason to own an Xbox at this point was to get an Xbox One X so you could get the best experience of the, the uh, of the third party. I mean, even now with the Xbox Live uh, voice chat, even parties don't sound as good as they used to. Like, PS4 lobbies, they're more talkative, I find, Like because I play it, a lot of COD it's, it's online. It's shifted. It, it, people, it's not that people are being fickle. They've shifted to where the experience is best. Yeah, they're going to go where there's a player base. And in my experience with the COD community... <laughs> You're getting a lot more people playing on PlayStation now than you have on Xbox. Xbox has quieter lobbies, fewer people. I don't know whether that's just indicative of my experience, whether that's a uh, as the industry as a whole. Um, I don't know. Also, I mean, lives cost like Xbox Live costs more, but you get a lot out of it. But it but for parents, it costs more. Yes. And it's up to kids or consumers to educate whoever's buying their system. Say, hey, you get more out of Xbox Game Pass, but yes, it costs more. PlayStation Plus, yes, you get two free games each month, but they're not always the best. But sometimes they surprise you. Be prepared for like a the first week, like when the system comes out, the PS5. Like when the PS4 came out, they gave you uh, what was it? contrast or something or was it was a control or contrast yeah it was the or something it was that weird looking game they gave that out and they gave resogun for free yeah uh be prepared for and that was for people that weren't even ps plus that was just they gave you them be prepared that if you have a ps plus account that you can get like the last of us 2 remastered like a very recent title they will give away for free you you want to impress people they give you spider-man yeah spider-man remastered guarantee you they will do something big be a PS Plus member in the first month of owning a PS5 of when the system comes out, get and, and you get a seventy dollars game. Yeah, like it'll be something remastered, something recent, something that they knew sell, sold sold it, system. It'll be like or Nathan Drake collection. You get the whole collection, including um, the newest games, like the spinoffs. Kind of like how Xbox did Gears of War One Ultimate Edition, but they gave you each other game sub- subsequently. Yeah, yeah, do, that would do it. Do, give give us that, and or even give us a. Uh, uh, like remastered trilogies of uh, like Ratchet and Clank or something. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what we're speculating here. Oh, we didn't even talk about this. What's Xbox Two Project Scarlet going to cost you? I still think it's going to be about fifty bucks more. Yeah, I'm budgeting. Yeah, six hundred for it. I'm I, like, what I will do. Literally, the I can't say the day it's announced. I'm going to trade it in, but like. I have to be careful about how I do because we get review copies of things. To take advantage of trade deals, sometimes those trade deals only start at the beginning of when a thing's announced. So if they're like, hey, get $250 or $300 towards your your system if you trade in your PS4 Pro, I may have to trade in my PS4 Pro and forego certain reviews. Or do I make the, the jump and like trade it in but then get myself a slim uh, used for like 100 bucks just to use temporarily then trade that in too towards it when the system comes out. Yeah, I, I may have to do something like that. It's going to be an interesting next year, and I'm excited because this year's E3 was very, eh, it was okay, but it was nothing exciting outside of Keanu. Who gives yeah, a shit? Be prepared. Like we're going to have probably a pretty big uh, Nintendo Direct in March to signify the third year. Yeah. We will probably have a state of play around the same time because that's when the PlayStation experience is supposed to be happening. Yeah. Uh, expect that to be when they show everything off, and that's when they'll start showing games off because if they're not going to do E3, they're going to start showing games off leading up into E3, and March is going to be interesting because they'll want that information out to... Uh, to Retailers. To, to bump up their stock prices before the end of their fiscal year. Yeah. It's going to be good. I mean, I'm looking forward to E3 this year. Um, not so much what the ESA is doing, but that's a topic we've covered on Twig extensively. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I think either way, we're going to see a lot of good news come out of all the big trade shows at a Gamescom, Tokyo Game Show. 
our wallets are going to hurt next year. Um, I'm not looking forward to saving up. I've actually started to save up now. And for anybody that can, try to put away $25 per month. Yeah, if I'm you, putting away about 50 right if now. You can put away, if you're only looking for one system, yeah. uh, if you put away $25 per month uh, from now uh, until when the system comes out, even It'll if be fine. You know, in the States, you may not want to put that on. You may not want to go to your GameStop because your GameStop may not exist. In Canada, EB is doing significantly better. It's probably going to be okay. Um, they'll have to give money back anyway if, if you, you know what I mean? Like if they go bankrupt or something. But if you want to be safe, when the system gets announced and they show it, buy it on Amazon. And then buy yourself $25 gift cards every month. And, put the, and keep applying that $25 gift card to that order. And before you know it, you'll have three quarters of the system paid off before it even uh, launches. And then, you know, you won't even feel that on your paycheck or on your, you know, your, your bank account. Yeah. So that's our thoughts. That's our speculation prototype for the next little bit. We'll probably do uh, something a little bit closer to Black Friday, uh, basically and what you should pick up. Yeah. Part of, part of our sort of gift guide all, all in one. We'll do, we should do uh, a holiday buying guide just for games. Yeah, so we're as we plan these out, we do our traditional holiday gift guide will always come out uh, just before the 12th of December. But leading up to Black Friday, the flyers always come out early. So we'll try and do like a 15 minute. Here's the here are yeah, the major like, flyers. Like here, here's what to keep an eye out for. Uh, generally, in Canada, red flag deals is a good place for that. They, they yeah. even pull up some of the American deals too for us to look at. So we'll make sure to give you what we think you should buy this year because it's going to be a packed holiday season and not every title you pick up will necessarily be one released this year. So uh, we'll be sure to give you our thoughts on it. So um, until next time, um, pick your side, I guess. Uh, We have been Alex with a cat on his chest. I've been Mike the Birdman, Dodds, and live free or die hard. And as always, be cool, be kind, be careful. We'll catch you again right here on thisweekingeek.net. Boom, 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 boom,